nation's favourite antiques experts. That's me. I like that. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Hold on. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> On guard. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> I can't believe it! There'll be worthy winners <laughs> yes. and valiant losers. Okay, I was robbed. Will it be the high road to glory? Right, come on, let's go. Or the slow road to disaster. Oh, road. Ah! Oh, road. This is the Antiques Road Trip. Cool, blimey. Welcome to Warwickshire. Shakespeare country to enjoy the thrilling final act of our production, starring Raj Bisram, Trip Trooper, and Paul Martin, <laughs> the Ingenue. Your first road trip, the last leg of it. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's good, isn't it? It's great. Yes, the curtain's coming down on a dramatic drive. Not so much the two gentlemen of Verona as the two experts in a Mercedes Roadster. When the results come up at the auction, yeah. it's just so funny. I just laugh. I laugh my head off. <laughs> <laughs> Tragedy and comedy. Will would be chuffed. I love the successes and I also laugh at the failures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just as well. Although there haven't been too many of those. Wiltshire's own Paul may still be a bit of a greenhorn when it comes to strutting this particular stage. Hey, I'm good at spending money. But as an experienced dealer and a TV favourite, he knows how to hit his mark. Just going to dust the lens down. Raj from Kent likes to improvise as well as make profits. Whee! And our auctioneer's new catchphrase really says it all. Hey, I've got plenty of money at the moment. Which brings us to the latest work of high octane theatre. At 5.20 going once. At 5.20 going twice. Much ado about muffin. <laughs> that is just astonishing. £520. <laughs> I don't believe it. Talk about rave reviews. You're just short of a thousand pounds, and that's brilliant. Sometimes, you know, you have to be a bit lucky in this business. Modest as ever. Raj started out with 200 pounds, and after four trips to auction, he's turned it into a mighty 994 pounds and 74 p. While Paul, who began at the same sum, has come up with an almost as impressive 535 pounds 38 p. And you're going to spend it all? I'm going to try to. Break a leg, eh? They sallied forth from the county of Sussex and then went west on a roundabout, knockabout, shopabout, jaunt to Wessex and beyond. But the end of the road is now in sight, with everything still to play for. Today, they'll mostly be dividing their time between Worcestershire and Warwickshire, shoving off in Long Marston. Known as one of the Shakespeare villages because it's mentioned in some verse which could be by the Bard. Where they also have a barn. And not just any old barn. Here we go. Good job it's big, because they're in this one together. So, their pockets laden with cash and a barn full of buys. Will there be anything going for a sonnet? Can you guess what that is? It's a wasp trap. You can see where that old pontil mark is, where it's been inverted. OK. The wasp can fly up through there or down into there and get stuck in the jam or a bit of honey or anything like that, and then the wasp can't get out. I hate wasps, <laughs> but they do have a function. <laughs> they are pollinators, you know. Quite. Oh, hello. So that's Edwardian, that's about 1910, 1920. That's a what thing, a cheek. Actually. You could buy that for a tenner. And you got yourself a really good decorative wasp trap. And talking of pests. Oh, my word, look at that. <laughs> Floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. <laughs> oh, wasp. I think Raj's squillions might have made him go a bit giddy. Moving on. Now, this is a nice piece. This is a genuine antique. This is 18th century, probably dated around 1770, and it's Welsh. This is a coffer and was used for all sorts of things. Sometimes, if it was in a hallway, you would put linen in it. It's got its original lock plate, but the hinge is missing but it's got nice original carvings and there's some lovely detail around the edge. They've even gone and carved it in these little semicircles and it's made of oak. What about inside? 
The bottom plate has been replaced and I can see that straight away because the bottom plate has got hinge marks on it. So it's from an, a different piece. It's got 220 pounds on the ticket. If I can get this for 120 to 150 pounds, I've got a chance of a small profit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep looking around, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. Okie dokie, over to Paul. Now, <laughs> I had to come and look at these. I <laughs> saw them from over there. I love airplanes. I used to make models as a kid. They are Second World War model aircraft made for an ops room. The ops rooms you find underground in the bunkers. The majority of the plotters that were employed in the ops rooms were WAFs, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, and they would move these model aircraft on huge, great big tables that had a map on them, and they'd have a long stick, and they'd push them into position. Just like in all those war movies. That is just fantastic. Particularly, I like this one, because it's cruder, it's more sculptural. It doesn't look like a toy. It's definitely a period piece. And I think that, on a desk, would just look brilliant. I mean, that's a proper boy's toy. That really is. There's a piece of history as well. It's got 90 pounds on the ticket. I've not seen one for sale before, ever. Time to talk to Laura. I found something I've fallen in love with. Brilliant. There's 90 pounds on the ticket. I'd love to buy it. Very, very best. What's that? 50. We do 50 for you. I'm going to buy that. Lovely. Mm. Chocks away. Good start, Paul. Anything else? I like these a lot. On the ticket, it just says oak trestles. I can tell you they're sort of circa 1910. They are, in fact, coffin stands. You can see they're the right height to put a coffin on. Quite. And there's a, a slight ecclesiastical vibe to it. Lovely honey colour. It's all peg-jointed, tongue and groove. And all the construction is on show, you know, true to the arts and crafts form, which follows the 17th century construction. There's 150 pounds is on the ticket. If you could repurpose them and use them for something, then they're gonna fly. It's too high for a coffee table. It's too low for a, an occasional table, but it's the perfect height for coffee. <laughs> Do you know, he'll be wanting to know what the death is on those. Laura! As if by magic. I've spotted these oak trestles. They're little coffin stands, little coffin trestles. Oh. I'm not sure about the price. Right. £165. What's the very best? I think we'll be able to go down to 125 for you. That's the best, is it? It is. I've got to buy them. Always come in handy, I suppose, Paul. And he does still have £360 left. So, while one of our pair makes himself scarce... Right, there we are. Raj can look after those. Let's catch up with other. Already has first dibs on the coffer, remember? Now, what's he got there? And this is an old GWR sign. I think it's old. I'm not 100% certain, to be honest. I mean, I'm assuming from the price and the look of it, it certainly looks old. Persons throwing stones at the telegraphs will be prosecuted. I mean, for a collector of railway memorabilia, this is, this is fantastic. If it's genuine, I think it's really nice. I'm going to call in Laura and see what she can tell me about it. Laura? She's busy today. Hello. Hiya, hiya. I found something, OK? I just have one question to ask you, really. well, two, but the first one is, it is a genuine old one. It's a genuine old one, OK, definitely. good. And secondly, we're going to have to negotiate the price. You've got 120 on it, but I was hoping to offer you £50. I don't think we can go as low as 50 for you, Raj, but... OK. We can probably get to 90. What about we split the difference and call it 70? Right, go on then. A deal? Yep, a deal, definitely. Fantastic, thank you very much indeed. But before you go, I've also seen upstairs, you've got a really nice Welsh coffer. It's got £220 on the ticket. I'd like to offer you £120. What do you think about that? No, I can't do £120. I can knock it down to £150 for you. £150? I'll have it. <laughs> OK, thank you. Well, he can certainly afford it. Thanks ever so much.
£220 in total, although it looks like the coffer isn't going to fit in the trunk. Bye-bye, barn. Hello, alpaca. Loads of alpacas, plus the odd llama. Yes, you! In the alliterative Worcestershire village of Flyford Flavel, where Paul's taking a brief break from trying to keep up with Raj to find out about these fascinating mammals from farmer Victoria Barrett. So sweet. Oh, Victoria, this is fantastic. I'm meeting all your family all at once, and I bet they've all got names, haven't they? They have all got names, all got personalities, <laughs> not necessarily to match the names. Oh, they're so cute. I can see there's llamas and alpacas here. Yes, we have both. And it's the size difference, isn't it? Llamas were beasts of burden, so yeah, much bigger, much more muscly to carry packs up into the mountains. Those mountains being the Andes in South America, where these closely related creatures became domesticated over 9,000 years ago to supply food, fuel, transportation, and above all, fibre. They were valued because their fleece was so fine, soft and lustrous. In fact, Andean culture was literally woven together by their fibre. They used to make everything from ropes, tents, right down to the finest luxury fibres. But when the Spanish conquistadors invaded the region in the 16th century, the animals were slaughtered almost to the point of extinction in order to subjugate the indigenous people. Can I come in and join you? Please do. And meet the kids? Absolutely. <laughs> Nowadays, alpacas and llamas are found all over the world. Ah, oh, hello, everyone. With approximately 50,000 of them currently grazing British pastures. So when did they first arrive in the UK? Believed to be somewhere in the Victorian era. As a novelty? As a novelty. Zoo. <laughs> Zoo art. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Anna. Are you Anna? That's Anna, yeah. She's a half a llama. If there's trouble to be had, it'll be a llama having it. So, as a Victorian novelty? As a Victorian novelty in zoos, um, Queen Victoria had a herd. Oh, really? Titus Salt was a wool importer. He discovered a bale that nobody wanted on the dock, so he took it to his mill and experimented. And he was the first to actually utilise alpaca fibre. Queen Victoria wore the dresses, she led the fashion, uh, and alpaca coats were <laughs> something. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Before she was so rudely interrupted, I think Victoria was about to say that alpaca fibre is warmer, softer, stronger, and less itchy than sheep's wool. So what we're doing is taking the raw fibre yeah. as it comes from the animals being combed, and then we're going to turn it from this fluff into a solid textile felt. Okay the oldest known textile to man. And what you'll do is take your fibre, whatever colour you fancy, and lay it onto your bubble wrap in a row. So each bit overlaps the other. <laughs> and what we're going to do is repeat the process, but we're going to go perpendicular. So if you went crossways, we're going to go up and down with our rope. And, as any good felter knows, you have to get very wet. OK, it's a bit warm. A bit warm and a little bit soapy. The reason for the hot water is to open up the scales on the fibres and the soap in there will make the fibres slippery so that as they rub together, those scales will start to interlock. Time for the next stage, flat packer. Ha! Just press. We need it all completely wet. And we're going to roll it into a tight sausage. All right. And this final process is called fulling and it's where we're just going to roll and really, really work the fibres so they get tighter and tighter okay, and so tighter together. That. Now for the proof of the pudding. So if you're brave enough, just pick it up and then just try pulling it apart. Oh, yeah, it's quite firm, isn't it? It is. Wow, that's tough as hell. I'm pulling as hard as I can yeah. sideways. Victoria, that is amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm going to show the guys, see what they think. Good luck. <laughs> What's the big one called? Big Llama Sebastian. Sebastian, have a look at this. See how useful you are. <laughs> He's not impressed, is he? <laughs> to say the least. Back to the Bard and the former Forest of Arden. Yes, it was all heavily wooded in his day. 
And there goes Raj, no doubt musing on the fact that As You Like It is set about here, while he plots a course towards Wooten Warwen. Another tongue twister of a Warwickshire village. And The Sims Vintage Antique Centre. Afternoon. Wow. He still has over £770 to spend, as he likes to, of course. Wow, we what a mirror. Phil, this is incredible, this mirror. World War II searchlight parabolic mirror. I've not ever seen one like this. And it's the only one I've ever seen. These days, the use of parabolas to project or collect energy is found most commonly in satellite dishes. A guy phoned me up and said he's got a big mirror. I said, bring it in. He had a big mirror. It was fantastic. Sat in a barn not too far from here for about, well, most of the time since the Second World War. My goodness, I mean, how much are you asking for something like this? It's not for sale at the moment. The last one we found sold, very similar to that, sold for seven and a half grand. Gulp. It's a little too pricey for me, Phil. Do you mind if I carry on looking for you something do. I can afford? Please do. Thank you. Never mind the parabolics. <laughs> Mirror, that is. Something in a cabinet, perhaps. Ooh, look at this. I'm always drawn to silver. And look at this, this lovely cigar case. It's Birmingham, 1854. It's in good condition. You can imagine, in 1854, gentlemen of the time, it looks like it's a cigar case for about two cigars, maybe three. I should think you could get three in there. And it's in great condition. When you buy silver, you should always be looking for little dents, and this one doesn't seem to have very many. The plaque on the front here has got no initials, so if you were to give it as a present, you could have their initials put on it. Ticket price, £145. And I think it's a sort of a hunting scene on the back here. Nice clear hallmark, and you can make out the maker's name as well, which is Alfred Taylor. I know that smoking isn't in vogue anymore, but what a lovely piece to own. I'm going to keep looking round and seeing what else I can find. So I'm going to put it back for the moment and maybe come back to it. Well, that's reassuringly expensive, Raj. <laughs> now what's he found? Look at this. This is a, uh, a pilot's helmet and goggles from the Cold War, so we're looking at anything after the Second World War. This looks like it should be really light, but actually, it's quite heavy. Fits like a glove. Oh, he does like a hat, our Raj. And this is really unusual. It's even got the pilot's name in there. Look at that. I mean, this is part of history. Apparently, for Vulcan bombers, £100 with Googles. And it's quite simply made. It's just made of cloth. But there are a lot of collectors who collect these things, and the fact that it's got its goggles with it as well, I'm sure is going to increase the value. Googles, please. <laughs> Gird your loins. Phil. Hi. Hi there, Phil. I've seen something else I like. It's a uh, Cold War helmet with the goggles. Now, I'm not going to haggle. There's £100 on the ticket. What's the best price you can do on this? I know the dealer very well. I know what his best is. It's 60 quid. He won't take a penny less. At 60 pounds, I'm going to say yes. Fantastic. Great. But before you go, I was looking earlier at that lovely 19th century silver cigar case. You've got 145 pounds mm -hmm. on the ticket. What about if I were to offer you 80 pounds? Couldn't accept 80. I'm no, that was not. really quick. No. It, yeah, we know okay, that. Okay, fair yeah. enough, yeah. fair enough. The very best is 100 pounds. OK, I like it. At £100, it's in good condition, I'm going to say yes. Parting with cash. Such sweet sorrow. Hey, Raj? 120... Phil's keeping a close eye. £160. Thank you very much. Time to grab the Googles and get off to see his chum. While I try to resist the urge to say night-night. Next day, our empathetic experts are performing in costume. Well, almost. Is that your favourite hat? This is, without a doubt, my favourite hat. It keeps my ears warm. Because I knew you had a hat, <laughs> and I forgot to bring one. So I thought, I'll buy a hat. That's the first one I saw. Really, Paul? You amaze us. We might swap later on. We'll really? give it a go. 
moon, not sure about that. <laughs> I wonder if either of them would be enthusiastic about swapping what they bought yesterday. With Raj acquiring a Cold War pilot's helmet, a railway sign, a silver cigar case and a Welsh coffer, as you do. £150, I'll have it. Leaving him with just over £600 for today's purchases. While Paul splashed out on a pair of oak trestles and a World War II model aircraft. That's a proper boy's toy. And still has over 350 in his war chest. Last night I watched the snooker, it was live on telly. One player came from four frames behind to win, you know. Everyone was giving up on him, but he dug in deep. It's kind of like, I'm going to use that as a metaphor. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to dig deep. Go dig deep, Raj. <laughs> Positively Shakespearean. Must be rubbing off. It hath a way of doing that. More Warwickshire now, beginning back in the former forest of Arden. In another of Will's old stomping grounds. Gets a mention in Love's Labour's Lost, apparently. Also, more former barns, now filled with antiques. And vintage. I just hope they've got enough barn barns to go around. <laughs> Not that Paul, having already dropped his chum off, will be pondering anything other than what might give him a snooker-style resurgence. Dig deep. Little piggy. Probably not going to market. Oh, yes. Well, why not? He does often buy a painting, of course. Meaning? I like that. That's OK. And it's by Louisa Ann Waterford. And she was taught to draw by Dante Gabriel Rossetti, one of the pre-Raphaelites. And the pre-Raphaelites were this group of radicals, and their take on life was everything had to be more romantic and in the medieval style, and, and it was really beautiful and colourful. Holman Hunt, Mele, William Morris, I mean, great names. And she is part of the inner circle of the pre-Raphaelites. Her sketchbooks are in the National Portrait Gallery. This looks like it's come from a, a sketchbook. It's a watercolour, it's a loose watercolour, on plein air. So it was probably done on her travels. And it's subject matter, is her, it's signed, it's dated, it's in good condition. I don't think it's been out of this frame, actually. Ticket price, £95. I think that's quite a good business move, but I'm going to mull it over. I'm going to get on this bike. Of course. Obvious, really. When weighing up a watercolour, to buy or not to buy. Steve? Ah, oh, here we go. Hello. Enter stage left. I reckon I've done about four miles already. <laughs> Look, that watercolour's caught my eye. OK. And you got £95 on the ticket. What's the very best you'd sell that to me for? Well, I could probably do 75 Could we do, could we do £70? Yeah, OK, sold. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Now, give the man his cash. I'm going to leave that there, look, on your gramophone. OK. 70 on the 78. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. And pop the picture in the back. Snug as a bug in the ruck. OK, so moving on from Shakespeare, the next item on our cultural agenda is ballet. How does she do that? In the splendid spa town of Great Malvern, where our dance correspondent, yes, that's him, has come to find out about one of the world's other great art forms from ballerina and teacher Nikki Fawkes. Fantastic. I have to be honest, I don't know a lot about ballet. What is the history? When did it start and where? So it started in the French royal courts. It was a court dance and from there it spread to other courts throughout Europe. However, it dates back to the 15th century in Italy, so it goes back even further. It was a very different art form back then. It was more of a way of telling a story without actually using words. There were very lavish costumes and sets and everything. Whereas now it's definitely gone a little bit more towards sport and a little bit more towards gymnastics, as well as telling the story on top. The term ballet has its origin in the Italian word balletto, or little dance. Although it was in Paris under Louis XIV that the Royal Dance Academy was founded in 1661, 
It was there that the five basic feet positions were created. The moves that they used then, are they still the same moves that you use now? Absolutely. You can see the, the basis in ballet hasn't really changed. We've adapted it, we've evolved over the years, but the basic steps are still within the vocabulary. Because when I think of ballet, I think of ballerinas. Absolutely. That's the quintessential image, the prima ballerina. But it wasn't until about the 1800s with Marie Taglioni, who started the change towards more heroin-led storyline. The Italian dancer was one of the most important figures in the history of ballet. La Sylphide was created for her in the 1830s, one of the oldest works still performed today. I keep hearing this terminology on point. What does that mean? So it's the difference between a dancer being on their balls of the feet up on a rise to actually being on the tips of those toes on point. And it originated in the romantic era of ballet, which was a lot of good versus evil. It's a lot more romantic. <laughs> and talking of heroines, meet some of Nikki's young students at the nearby Cecilia Hall Dance Centre. When did ballet actually come to Britain? Ballet started performing in the 1800s with quite a bit of popularity. And then in the early 1900s, the Ballet Russe came, which was a Russian touring company. Amazing sets, they're gorgeous ballerinas, all of their costumes. And London really fell in love with ballet all over again. So ballerinas all of a sudden were like movie stars that came here, especially Anna Pavlova, who was a Russian ballerina of that time. Everyone wanted to be around her and she often taught over in England. And then Nanette de Valois started the Royal Ballet in around the 1930s. And we have now one of the best companies in the world. So how long would it take them to learn these moves? The basic positions, such as first, second, the leg in the air, the arabesque, which the girls have been practicing since they were in grade one, which is sort of four years old. Oh, wow. So it takes a very long time. Are there any easier moves in <laughs> Oh, there's lots. We oh, can good. teach you. <laughs> Are you sure? This is a man who thinks Nijinsky was mainly a racehorse. <laughs> yeah, look at that. So we're going to learn a demi-plie, which is our first position, heels together, squeezing the bum, arm slightly in front. So we're going to go bend and up, and bend and up. There we are. So far, so good. And this is where it might hurt. We're going to do a grand plie. So we're going to go all the way down. Our heels are going to come up and then we're going to return. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? And back up. Perfect, yes. So put them all together. OK. One. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. There we go. That's our first exercise. OK, yeah. Good. Shake it out. Bravo. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's still a few more miles to go. But that final destination is now awfully close. I'm feeling rather sad. I'm just enjoying the car. Look, I've noticed it's a bit rough around the edges, but it's an old classic. Kind of like to think it's like me. <laughs> Full service history? <laughs> um, I, we belong together. You and me, babe. These two do have one more shop left to visit, though, in the Worcestershire town of Kidminster. At Ian Warner Antiques. Wish me luck. Good luck. Still got three hundred pounds left to spend, of course. And who knows? Mm. That trip, winning by, might just be in here somewhere. That is some centerpiece. Wow, that's amazing. How about we wrap this epern and stick it under the hammer? I wouldn't like the job of transporting it. As regards epernes, that's one of the largest I've seen. It's huge. It's designed to be a centrepiece, but I think that's quite crude and disgusting. That's Victorian filth at its worst. <laughs> hmm, sounds like a no, doesn't it? Raj has also one more shop to go. Down by the River Seven, with a bridge by Thomas Telford. Yes, that'll be beautifully then. And that'll be Raj the proud possessor of over £600 in ready cash. Excuse me, do I gnome you? This is a really lovely figure. It's by Johann Moresch, who was an Austrian sculptor, and he mostly 
sculpted things in terracotta. And this particular piece was made around 1880, and it was to advertise the Kodak box camera. And that's what he's holding here. So this would have been an advertising piece in a shop window, for example. Well, the box brownie wasn't introduced until 1900, so more like early 20th century. And if I told you the price, OK, I know I've made some money so far, but not as much as this. This has got £3,200 on the ticket. They are quite rare now. Because they're made of terracotta, a lot of them were damaged. And this one has got a little chip here as well. And actually, the more I look at him, the more he reminds me of Paul. Must be his tit for tat. And what he's famous for, as well as doing these figures, were his tobacco jars, which are very collectible as well and much more affordable these days. So I'm going to have to leave that and keep looking. That's a uh, gnome, then. <laughs> Moving on. A lady's mannequin. This is a typical shop mannequin. I have to say, though, I don't think I've ever seen a mannequin quite so tall. It's made out of papier-mâché, and it looks like it's all in its original condition. It's quite moth-eaten, but it's got the maker's name on the plate as well. Harris of Birmingham. This is probably early 20th century, and at £50 on the ticket, I'm going to give the man £50. And there's the lucky recipient now. Matthew, I found something. Do you know, I'm not going to quibble at all. I'm just going to give you £50 for it. Very good. And that's his last buy of the trip. One, two, three, one, so, two, three, while one, Raj two, troops one, off, three, one, two, three, we'll knit back to Kidderminster, where proprietor Ian is not exactly busy as yet. Oh, there he is. What's in the frame? Actually, that's nice as a mirror. It's a good size. I say this is 1830, 1840. It's bird's eye maple. It's just coming into the Victorian period. But it's understated, it's refined. It's got classical lines. So it kind of resembles a big Roman building with these wonderful chunky capitals at the top that you would normally find offset with some finials, which are rather sweet. It's not too dark. You know, everyone says brown's out of fashion, but it's not. I'm on a mission to bring brown back in. BBBI could catch on. Let's take a look at the back. I think the glass is original. It's got a partially gilt slip, which is original. Yeah, look at that. It's got its original back. And you can tell that. Look at those dirty old nails. And that's just basic deal. That's the cheapest wood you can find. Deal, OK? It's a pine. It's got a very broad grain. And it's got a refined, classical look to it. And it's £75. Now, if I can get that for 50 quid or less, I'll buy it. This is where Ian comes in. Ian, I was just about to check out upstairs. I got halfway up the stairs and I spotted this mirror on the wall. OK? Right. It's got 75 quid on the ticket. What's the best to me? You can have it for £45. 45 quid's a true reflection of the price, isn't it? Do you get the pun? Oh, he gets it all right. Still not oiled that door by the sound of it. Now, time to pick up his pal and head off to that final auction. What would be your lasting memory of this road trip, Paul? The car, the company and Muffin the Mule. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is, it's not over yet. It's not, is it? No. <laughs> Quite. Shut eye first, though. Take a look at that. Another auction, another Palladian mansion. This time, they're watching from Glen Fall House on the edge of Cheltenham. Raj, hi. <laughs> hi, Paul. You made it then? Yeah. What a lovely day, eh? This is fantastic. What a place to finish, though, Paul. It's gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? Cheltenham in the distance. This is our last auction. I know, I it's know. It's quite sad. I mean, it's exciting, but it's, it's kind of sad in a way. Well, you bond together after all this time. You see the ups and downs. Exactly. Let's just hope we end on an up. After shopping Shakespeare style in Warwickshire and Worcestershire, they'll be having a denouement in the Cotswolds. While their purchases have headed north towards Rotherham and Paul Baton auctioneers. For sale on the net, on the phone, and left with the auctioneer. Paul parted with £290 for his four auction lots. While Raj 
spend a bit more. 430 for five lots. Let's find out what auctioneer Jody Baton reckons might fly. £35. The oak coffin trestles, even though they're, they're pretty macabre, they're a lovely golden colour and nicely carved as well. The silver cigar case, that's one of my favourites. It's really nice quality. And what makes it is that country scene engraved on the cartouche. I'm expecting good things of that one. Roll up, roll up. And so, without further ado... I'll be ready for this, our very last auction. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Good luck. You too. Thank Good you. Luck. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. First in line, Raj's railway armour and a stern warning. Had quite a lot of damage and I did pay a lot for it. We're at 30, we're at 35, oh. let's see 40. Commission bids, Raj. Commission bids. Looking for 45. 45 is a bit 50 bid. 55, let's see. Come on, keep going. Bids at 50, it's 55, 65. 65. 70 is bid, 75, let's see. 80 is bid, looking for 85. Bids yes. 80. More profit. All done and sure then at 80 pounds. 85 still creeping oh, up. 90 back in. 90 is bid. Oh, 90. At 90 then. Last chance to bid. 90 in a way. Sold. Well done. Small profit. 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Profit. That'll do. That'll do. Could that be a sign? <laughs> well, obviously it's a sign. An omen then. Brilliant result, Raj. 20 pounds profit. Can't complain. Paul's bomber as pushed across gigantic tables by members of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. The undercarriage was a little bit damaged around the props. It had that original wear, you know, where it had been moved across the table. Bids at £30. At 30 Straight in at £34. Come on. Come on. 35, 45, let's see 50. 45. 50, let's see. It's Come Michelle's on, it's machine worth again. it. At 45, looking for 50. At £45, and we're selling. selling. Last chance at 45 and away. £5 loss. Not the end of the world. Someone picked up a very nice item on the cheap. It was worth more. The dealer gave me a good discount on that. One of the auctioneer's favourites next, Raj's silver cigar case. And these are the sort of things that usually do well online. So, yeah. you know, it's got, it's got a chance. It's a collectible. 80 then if you wish. Go on. Come on. 60 if you must. 60 we have. Looking for 65. Really? Let's, 65 come on. We're looking for no further interest. Disappointing at 60, but we'll sell that. No. At 60 and away. <laughs> no. That went up in smoke. That really did 60 pounds. My goodness. <laughs> Not the sort of loss that Raj is used to. Such a lovely thing, too. It was, actually. Trestle time. Paul's biggest spend. Beautifully crafted, but coffin stands. The appeal for me just isn't there. I'm regretting it, but at the same time, I know they're worth the money. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, 50 for the pair. 50 pounds. 50, let's see. 30, then, if you wish. It's 30 we have. Let's see, 35. Online at 35. 40 bit, 45 bit. 50. Here they go. Bids at 45 pounds. At 45 pounds, are we all done? 50 still creeping up. Oh. 55, 60 with you. Any advance then seems to have settled at 55. Are we all through with it? Well, that's a Just massive the loss. Estimate, then, at 55 pounds. Sold to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I can't... Bit of a loss there. Big loss. Moving on. Very useful for one thing, though. The undertakers didn't find them. No, well, it was a limited market. Unlike all those Vulcan pilots online, one of Raj's. If this takes off, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. Bids at 40 online straight off. Let's see, 45. Bids at 40. Looking for 45 in the advance. 45, let's see. 45 bid with the 50 bid. 55, let's see. Anything further? We have 50 oh. pounds and we're selling. All then endure for 50 pounds then. Small loss, Raj. Yeah, it started off well. I thought it was really going to take off. Yeah, I think you might have already said that, Raj. Obviously, it hit turbulence. Hard luck, Raj. Paul's painting. Let's hope the pre-Raphaelite connection pays off. We have bids online at £60. Oh, straight in at 60 Paul. The bottom estimate there, £60. Pounds. 65 we're looking for. Anything further? Come on. £60 pounds with online bidding. Another bidder at 65 70 against. 70, 70 is bid. 75 with you. Nothing further at £70 pounds and selling last chance. Washed its face. And just about wiped its feet. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Beats a loss, though, eh? I'm relieved that one broke even. Raj is dummy. He did well with one earlier in the trip, remember? £30. Start me somewhere. 20 then, if you must. No. 20 pounds. Well, I'll get in there. Anything for 20. 20 we have. Right. 22, 24, okay. let's see. We're in. 24 is bid. 26, 28, 30, let's see. 
30 we've got. 35 down, let's see. Come on. Bids at 35, 40 with you. At 35 then, are we all done insured? Nothing from no. the other no. We're at 35 pounds. All done insured then at 35 pounds. What? I'm certainly not buying any more no. dummies. Dummies are off. Yeah, a disappointing figure. <laughs> Small loss. Small loss. Let's move on. Yep, let's move on. Mirror, mirror on the sideboard. Do you still see a profit for Paul? Straight in at 40 on line 45. 50, 55, Ooh. let's see. 55 Ooh. is bid, looking for 60. Anything further? We have 55 on line. Looking for 60. Come on, come on, come on, come on. At 55 pounds. No further interest at 55 and away. Well done. Small profit. Got to be happy with that. Yeah. Yep. Very happy with that. Good. <laughs> Bringing Brown back in, remember? Finally, Raj's coffer. The porter's keen. What about the bidders? I know there was a few things wrong with it. I think as a decorator's piece and as a storage piece, you should double your money. It should be worth 300 quid. Commission bids mine 100 pounds, I give a 110. Oh. On the book for 100, 110, let's see any advance. 110. 120 on commission, 130 with you. Oh. 140, 150. Oh. It's getting there. 160, 170, 180, oh. Profit. 190. 220. At 200 pounds on commission against the internet, if you're all through 220, bid last chance there, 240, 260, 280, 300. Well done, 300. Go on, one more then. <laughs> be, be a bit greedy, one yeah. more. 320, 340 with you. The bid's 320 on the book. At 320 and away. 320! Yes. And that has gone yes. down. 320, <laughs> I'm pleased with that. Looks like we finished on that up. Raj, that's our last auction, our last day. I know. It's not the best auction to end on for me. A few highs, a few lows, but... Your first road trip, you've made a stack of money. I've been very fortunate as well. Look, congratulations, because you've just done over a £1,000, which is fantastic. Well done, Raj. Well, congratulations all round. Paul started out with £535.38p, and after auction costs, made a bit of a loss. So he ends up with £429.88, pence, which is brilliant. While well, Raj, who began with £994.74p, made yet another profit, taking his total for the trip to an amazing £1,019.84, with all profits going to children in need. Paul, your first antiques road trip. It's been brilliant. You've enjoyed it? Absolutely fantastic. fantastic. I've enjoyed being on the road with you. The car never let us down. It was all around the south here, working the way up to the Midlands. I just think it's been a terrific time. All's well that ends well, with a tiny bit of all right on the night. The bearded carnal. Car <laughs> Take two. It's a little French. Oh. I mean, these have never, ever been taken out of their badge. Uh, sorry, badge? Mine's just stopped. Oh, poor you and your big fingers. I've got a foot the size of your finger. Tell me about this incredible mural. OK, did I say mural? Yes. OK, sorry, OK. Cheerio, David. Cheerio, Paul. Thanks for dressing up. 